Congratulations to the Auburn Tigers by not getting blown out by Georgia this year. Congratulations. That is a huge, huge step in, of improvement for Auburn and Hugh Freeze and his coaching staff. Now, we're going to talk about that game and a lot of other games today that happened in the SEC this past weekend. But first, if you guys already the channel, be sure to drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. We will be talking about the MLB coming up shortly in another video coming today before the wild card playoffs begin tomorrow. So stick around for some MLB playoff predictions as well. But obviously, if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to drop a like, subscribe, turn that bell on. We do our best to post on this channel every single day. With that being said, let's hop into some SEC week number five, I believe, reactions. All right, so the first game on this day, or at least during SEC play this weekend, was Florida and Kentucky. And holy shit, did Kentucky come out murdering Florida. Yes, I thought Florida was going to win this game. If you guys watch my SEC predictions, then you guys would have known I, I had Florida going into Kentucky and destroying the ever-living crap out of Kentucky. Obviously, that did not happen. The other way around happened. But great win for Kentucky as well as it they improved to 5-0 on the SEC if Auburn would have beaten Georgia, which we'll talk about in this game or coming up. If they would have beaten Georgia, then Kentucky would have been first in the SEC East. But that did not happen. And now Kentucky takes the lead or has a 5-0 and start to the season. So Kentucky is most likely going to at least a bowl game, in my opinion, as well. Florida, on the other hand, they've got some work to do with this squad. Now, granted, I don't think there's nothing wrong, wrong with this squad. I think that they have dropped out of the AP poll, if I'm not mistaken. But there's nothing wrong with Florida's team. They just got absolutely killed by Kentucky. That's the best way to put it. Kentucky came to play on Saturday, and that's what it looked like, at least from my aspect of things. That is my reaction to the Kentucky and Florida game, though. All right, moving on to the next game is Missouri and Vanderbilt. And holy crap, was this a game to watch. Missouri pulling away at the end of the fourth quarter, I believe, as well. A little bit there because both teams did score in every quarter. Now, granted, was it close? Not really. Missouri kind of got up at the half. They were up by like 14 or something at the half on Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt started to come back a little bit in this game. But if you're, Van if you're a Vanderbilt fan, you are liking what you see from Hupel, obviously, and that coaching staff as well. You're liking what you're seeing out of this, this group, especially with what he's been doing with the program every year, getting them another SEC win. That's what you need to build on for years to come if you're a Vanderbilt fan. Now, if you're Missouri fans, on the other hand, you are also 5-0 to start the year. I don't know how that's even possible right now. But Missouri and Kentucky and Georgia are all 5-0. The SEC East is going to be a very, very tough competition. The West, on the other hand, is going to be a wide-open division. Anybody with anything can get this as well. But that is my reaction to Vanderbilt and Kentucky. Missouri fucking absolutely destroyed Vanderbilt. All right, moving on to A&M and Arkansas. And this is the exact same story with the Missouri and Vanderbilt game. Same score. Obviously, for the most part, A&M did let up or did score another touchdown at the end of that. But honestly, who is counting for real? A&M. Kent, Arkansas, that was the exact same thing. Arkansas is now 2-3. and A&M moves on to 4-1 and one on the year. I really liked how JT Dan, or that Trent, the LSU transfer, played in Kentucky, or his first time on the road at A&M. If you're asking me, you'd like to see that out of your backup quarterbacks. But other than that, great win for Tennessee, or Texas A&M, and obviously Arkansas has got some work to do. All right, moving on, you got one of the oh, one of the only games that I watched this past weekend, Tennessee and South Carolina. Exactly what I said, exactly what fucking happened. Tennessee fucking murdered the shit out of South Carolina as well. Tennessee got the win at home against South Carolina, and honestly, that was what was expected to happen. Tennessee, Joe Milton getting it done. Two interceptions, though, on today. Joe Milton has to get better with his accuracy and with his timing, if you're asking me. On the other hand, though, Jalen Milrow, obviously, or Jay Milton, did really, really good. He threw for one touchdown. The rushing game for Tennessee got in there a little bit as well. So, Tennessee is clicking on all cylinders right now, if you're asking me. Great win for Tennessee, obviously, being their rivals. And Spencer Rattler may be one of the better quarterbacks in the SEC. So, do not sleep on South Carolina. 
All right, and the last game to react to, again, these are very, this is going to be a very, very short video. I'm sorry, but that's all I can do for you. But the number one game this week, Georgia at Auburn. Now, I don't know what the fuck was happening with Georgia. Georgia was not going on offense today or last week at all uh, during that game. Yes, Brock Bowers obviously was that guy. He uh, He's one of the best players in the country. If you're asking me, he is the Heisman candidate favorite for me. But Carson Beck struggled in that road atmosphere as well. Peyton Thorne, on the other hand, you'd like to see this out of Peyton Thorne, this production play. Peyton Thorne is going to be a really, really good quarterback. You just got to give him time to be that really, really good quarterback. Now, that being said, did I expect Auburn to absolutely have this game? No. We were up for the majority of the game. As you can see, 10 to 0 at the end of the first, 10 to 10 sec at halftime, 7 to 7 going, or 17 to 17 going into the fourth, and then obviously the third quarter, is, or the fourth quarter is where Georgia got us, and that is where our defense let up. DJ James did not make that tackle, which he was supposed to be, and that could have been the game-saving tackle. You never know, but you have to make those plays, especially at the end of that game. That was the go-ahead touchdown for Georgia, was DJ James not let or not tackling Brock Bowers. He was about from here, right here, to each other. Now, he could have gotten there and dove, and yes, he was already going for the pylon, but he could have made a play, and he could have made that tackle. If you're asking me, our defense did give out a little bit, but we were missing some key players, and I hope these injuries aren't so far setbacks, as we now know the time of the LSU game, 6 or 6.30. I don't know why they're doing it like that, but obviously, great for Auburn to build off of, especially in this rivalry game. Our three-game home win streak against number one opponents has been snapped. But other than that, great day for the Auburn Tigers. Like to see it. If we can beat or play like we did against Georgia, there's no question we should beat every team that we play this year, even Alabama. I think we have what it takes to beat Alabama this year. We just got to get it in motion and play like we played against Georgia. Now, can we do this after this bye week? Hopefully, but that is my reaction. I know this clip was a little bit long. That's my thoughts on the Auburn and Georgia game, though. A very good game, and I don't think Georgia should be ranked number one. But hang on, you got Alabama and Mississippi State, and again, another game. That was what we predicted it was going to be. Alabama fucking absolutely drilling Mississippi State in the head. They walk into Starkville, take the dub, and show them no mercy. If you're Nick Saban, though, Jalen Miller had a pretty good ga game as well. He had two rushing touchdowns on the day. So you'd like to see that quarterback production out of Jalen Milrow if you're Nick Saban. Now, Mississippi State, on the other hand, I don't know what happened with them. They fell off after that four first quarter or so. But they did start scoring some points. But obviously, it was not enough as the Alabama Crimson Tide improved to 4-1 and one on the year. State dropping to two and three. Mississippi State's again probably going to be one of those teams that's an easy win. If Auburn can beat Mississippi State and can beat Vanderbilt, then they will be fine getting to a bowl game. Is that's what you need if you're he's, if you're he freeze. Now back to the Alabama State game. Nick Saban, on the other hand, their offense was clicking on all cylinders. Offensive line was firing up fast. That's what you want to see if you're Nick Saban. If you ask me, that's my reaction. Alabama fucking drills Mississippi State in this one. Goes on the road and gets a hell of a victory. Anyway, that is going to be all for my SEC week number five predictions. Let me know yours in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, turn that bell on. We do our best to post on this channel every single day. With that being said, I'm going to hop off, get this edited so you guys can watch it on time. Again, sorry for the short video. I've got places to be here in about an hour. And I've got to get another video out for the other channel as well. And pre-record Tuesday's video. That's all for me, though. Let me know your reactions in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, turn that bell on. Again, we do our best to post on this channel every single day. And so we can hit that 1,000 subscriber goal with Noah McNogany. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video, though. Peace.